Hello and welcome back, my friends. If you're new here, my name is Laura, and I usually make videos about hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome to help educate, raise awareness, and share my experiences and advice living with this condition. But today we're going to branch out from my usual hypermobile EDS content to talk about vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I plan to do an introductory video for each of the 13 subtypes of EDS, so stay tuned if you're interested in learning about the rarer subtypes of EDS. So what is vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? Vascular EDS is a rare genetic connective tissue disorder characterized by very fragile blood vessels and organs that are prone to tearing and rupture. Vascular EDS is estimated to affect somewhere between 1 in 50,000 and 1 in 200,000, making it the third most common subtype of EDS, but by far the most serious due to the disorder's high risk of arterial and hollow organ ruptures. In fact, the median life expectancy for a person with vascular EDS is only about 51 years old, with the median age of the first major vascular event being around age 23. Due to the severity of the disorder, early diagnosis is extremely important. Because vascular EDS has known gene mutations that are responsible for causing the disorder, and because it is such a serious diagnosis, genetic testing is required to receive an official diagnosis of vascular EDS. Vascular EDS is almost always inherited in an autosomal dominant pattern, meaning only one copy of the gene mutation from a parent is necessary to inherit the disorder, and a person with vascular EDS has a 50% chance of passing it on to their children. The known gene mutations for vascular EDS are usually found on the COL3A1 gene and sometimes on the COL1A1 gene. Vascular EDS should be suspected and ruled out genetically in individuals with any one of the five major diagnostic criteria or several of the 12 minor diagnostic criteria, especially in people younger than 40 years of age. The five major criteria include family history of vascular EDS, arterial rupture at a young age, spontaneous bowel perforation, uterine rupture during pregnancy, and carotid cavernous fistula, which is an abnormal connection between the carotid arteries and the cavernous sinus veins. The 12 minor criteria include thin translucent skin with visible veins, especially noticeable on the chest and abdomen, the characteristic facial appearance of thin lips, a small lower jaw, a narrow nose, and prominent eyes, acrogeria, which is an aged appearance to the extremities, particularly the hands, small joint hypermobility, tendon and or muscle rupture, early onset varicose veins, spontaneous pneumothorax, which is an abnormal collection of air in the space between the lungs and the chest wall without an obvious cause such as trauma, unexplained and or easy bruising, gum recession and fragility, congenital dislocation of the hips, club foot, and keratoconus, which is when the cornea of the eye thins and bulges outward into a cone shape. If you're watching this video and you find that you meet any of the major criteria for vascular EDS, let your doctor know right away. If you meet several of the minor criteria and have not been diagnosed with any other connective tissue disorder, you should still bring it to your doctor's attention, but don't lose too much sleep over it. Many connective tissue disorders have a lot of symptom overlap with each other, so it's quite possible that you could have something less serious, such as hypermobile EDS like me. If you get genetic testing done and discover that you have a genetic variant located on the COL3A1 or COL1A1 genes, don't panic. You will only be diagnosed with vascular EDS if you are found to have a genetic variant that is known to cause vascular EDS. Genes can have many different variants, and not all variants cause disease. Genetic variants are classified into five categories, pathogenic, meaning known to cause disease, likely pathogenic, or likely to cause disease, uncertain significance, meaning more research is needed to make a determination, likely benign, or likely to not cause disease, and benign, or known to not cause disease. While there is no cure for vascular EDS, there are many treatment options. Treatment is tailored to each patient's individual symptoms and may include medication, lifestyle modifications, physical therapy, joint bracing, and mobility aids. Because of the extremely high risk of arterial and hollow organ rupture in people with vascular EDS, a huge focus is placed on monitoring and prevention of these potentially deadly events. This may include yearly scans of the major arteries, close monitoring during pregnancy, avoidance of contact sports and other activities that risk injury, and an emergency plan in place for a vascular event. Because vascular EDS isn't something that is readily apparent just by looking at someone, it's considered an invisible chronic illness. Because it's an invisible chronic illness with a wide range of seemingly unconnected symptoms, people with undiagnosed vascular EDS are unfortunately often labeled as hypochondriacs because they are usually young and healthy looking. And that's exactly why I make these videos, to help spread awareness and knowledge. 
Do you have vascular EDS? How and when did you find out? Let me know down in the comment section. If you thought this video was helpful, please click on the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel and don't worry, it's completely free. If you click on the notification bell icon, you'll be notified when I release new videos. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.